Hey guys, I'm Michelle from Michelle's Romantic Tangle, and I'm going to talk to you today about Old Stash. If you watch my videos or read my blog, you may know that most of my stash is from estate sales and thrift stores and handed down from family members, so I am all for using the old stuff. But I keep seeing people ask questions about, is this too old to use? And I thought I would share my experiences on the subject. I'm not a fabric conservator. I'm not an expert. This is my experience with what I have worked with. Let's start with the embroidery floss. I was reading a blog post by someone else the other day, and it was talking about the old DMC paper tags. They have switched. I don't know when, because it was when I was taking my break from stitching. They went from the paper tags to the plastic tags. And someone suggested that if you have paper tags, they're old and maybe you should replace them. I bought the bulk of my floss back when we were still living in the old house more than 15 years ago. I would not dream of replacing my floss just because it is 15 or 20 years old. If I had to do that, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be stitching right now. And I have not had any problems. It's been stored in my sewing room, which is an outbuilding that is insulated but not climate controlled. My house is barely climate controlled. And I have not had any problems. I also have a fair amount of DMC that has the really old tags. I use all three of them. I use the new stuff, my old stuff, and the really old stuff, and I have not had a problem. I've heard people talk about brittle floss. That is not a phenomenon I've ever experienced. So my first thought when someone asks, can I use grandma's or mom's or my own old materials is, well, what does it look like? What does it smell like? If it looks and smells and feels like it did the day it came from the quilt shop or the needlework shop, then by all means use it. If you find it at a thrift store or at an estate sale and it looks like new, use it. I would be very cautious if I was making a purchase sight unseen, if it was from an online vendor who was selling used stuff that I did not know about. I would tread lightly there, but if it is already mine, or if it is in front of me at an estate sale or thrift shop, the fact that it is old does not scare me off. Now the one thing where I would maybe caution you is, I don't know about the dye lots issue. I'm working on this one, it's Caledonian Sky. I printed the pattern out and bought the floss in 2001 and did not start it till last year. If I had to rebuy the floss for this project, I wouldn't be stitching it now. I like it. I don't like it enough to buy the floss a second time. I'm playing with fire on this one. If I run out of floss and have to switch to another scheme that is 20 years newer, it's probably going to show. But I have some tricks up my sleeve. If It looks like I'm going to be fine. If I did run out of floss on the sky, I would blend some strands from the new and old skein to transition over, or I would do a diagonal line to make it another subtle little curve in the sky. There are ways around it, but if you are working on something where your color absolutely has to match, yes, make sure all of your floss comes from the same era and that it is all the same color. Having said that, I've bought sock yarn from the same manufacturer on the same day that was the same dye lot number that very much did not match. So there are no guarantees either way. Let's talk about yarn. I have been knitting with yarn, sock yarn I bought 15 years ago. And if it seems like I always use 15 years as a benchmark, that's because we bought this house 15 years ago and I can pretty much date things to 15 years ago when we bought the house, 20 years ago when my oldest son was born, six years ago when my husband had his car accident. I do not keep track of the age of my stash, but there are some big landmarks in there that make it really obvious what happened when. 
I'm using 15 year old sock yarn. I would not know that it was 15 year old sock yarn if I didn't know that I bought it when we lived at the old house. It hasn't changed. It is fine. I started an afghan for my sons with 40 year old guessing based on the shade of avocado green and the labels at least 40 year old acrylic yarn and you know it's yucky green acrylic yarn but it is exactly the equivalent of the yucky green acrylic yarn that I could go buy at Walmart this afternoon I don't notice any difference in the how it has held up over the years haven't finished that project, but that's not because of any problem with my supplies. That is just because I got so tired of doing scar squares of that yarn. And they stopped playing Minecraft and a creeper afghan got less appealing. I should sew the squares together. I mean, it's so close to done. If I was using really old wool and going to make a shawl that would require aggressive blocking, I would tread more lightly. The best thing to do with all of this, swatch it and see how it behaves and whether or not you like it. Quilting fabric. I have been reading the guidelines for how to tell if your quilting fabric is good enough to use. And some of the criteria is based on thread count and holding it up and if you can see through it. If you followed that criteria blindly, going through grandma's old fabric stash, you could be throwing away feed sacks and some other fabrics that are really prized by collectors. So don't blindly accept someone else's advice. I have made quilts with fragile old fabric. When I, I have one that I'm pretty darn sure is actual authentic feed sacks, at least part of the fabric. I made that quilt for my mother and it hangs in her sewing room. I would not have used that fabric to make a quilt for my own house because we wash things like crazy. If you're worried about how the fabrics will hold up and you want to use the fabrics, quilt it densely. That will do miracles to hold things together in the wash. It depends on how you are quilting it, what you, how big your pieces are, how dense your quilting is what you intend to use the finished project for. That quilt in my mom's sewing room has been probably at least a decade. It's, I assume, never been washed, probably never going to be washed because it's for display. I've got other quilts that have been washed so many times they're already fading. I'm not a fan of the rule to buy the best you can afford. I buy the most economical option that will do what I want to do when it comes to supplies, patterns, support the designers and do all that. Two different discussions there. And I do buy used patterns. I'm saying don't buy pirated patterns because I can see how someone could misconstrue my words. Threads, I have been using up the last of the threads that came when we bought my sewing machine 20 years ago. They're fine. They're just as good as they were on day one. I did a little bit of research and was reading a blog post by a seamstress who uses very old threads, says she has a one in a hundred school failure rate. Talked to my daughter who has made some dresses using threads her great grandmother gave her and she had atrocious luck. So for threads, I buy inexpensive thread that is of good quality. I can't say enough happy things about essentials from connecting threads. They do high yardage spools that go on sale. I don't mess with a state sale thread just because thread does not cost very much and while I'm quilting I don't want to fuss with that. If I'm using it to grid fabric for my cross stitch I really don't want to take a chance that that thread is not as stable as I would like it to be. Buttons, I don't think we even need to have the discussion because they're buttons. Zippers, I use old ones from estate sales that are probably 30, 40 years old. I will recommend that before you sew the zipper into your project bag, you zip and unzip it and make sure it works smoothly because I've not done that a couple of times and threatened to regret it 
come to regret it, but zippers are, they're stable. They don't, these things for the most part don't get old and expire. They don't have expiration dates. I don't know about glue. I don't know about paint. That is not stuff that I work with enough to have experience. I know that iron-on transfers will lose their dye over the years. I have some very old ones that I've pulled out of the packaging and the dye is just gone. So if I was going to use old ones, I will trace them with a transfer pencil onto a fresh sheet of paper instead of gambling with my fabric and transfer that it will work. Fusible interfacing will lose its sticky and it loses its sticky after a year or two. I've got some I bought and didn't use and now need to rebuy, but fabric, floss, yarn, buttons, thread. I got a whole stash of somebody else's sewing needles that I got in a sorted container at the thrift store. They don't go bad. Look at it, especially if it is something you already own. Look at it. See if you think it looks fine. If it looks fine, use it. If it's gross, then don't use it. If it's fabric, you might consider throwing it in the wash. But don't let someone tell you that you have to get rid of it just because it's old, because in a lot of cases, that is just not true. Let me know, how old is your stash? A lot of mine is older than I am. I'm working with cruel kits that are older than I am, and again, came from the thrift store, have no idea their history, but I have had no problems. I'm curious to hear your experiences, and if you live in a harsher environment than me here in the Pacific Northwest, maybe it's different. I would love to know what you think. I'm Michelle from Michelle's Romantic Tangle. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back with you with more videos again soon.